terrified. The two of them looked ahead and discovered a monster munching on something, scaring them into lying flat and hastily closing the car door. However, the monster seemed to notice something and began to slowly approach their car. Fortunately, thanks to their convincing acting, they managed to disguise themselves as corpses and escaped a close call right under the monster's nose. But the monster didn't plan to leave. Instead, it found another corpse and started feasting on it. Realizing this couldn't go on, the man had no choice but to try starting the engine. Seeing the monster hadn't noticed, he began to slowly reverse the car. It wasn't until they were close to another vehicle that he signaled his wife and child to quickly switch cars. But as soon as they opened the door, the monster spotted them. To cover for their escape, Ed decisively picked up a bottle of salt and stepped out of the car frantically spraying it onto the monster. It turned out these monsters were afraid of salt. But Ed's salt seemed fake and not only failed to work but also enraged the monster. By the time he thought to get back in the car, it was too late. Although Ed's sacrifice bought time for the others to escape, their flight from danger had just begun. For monsters like these had already taken over the world at this moment. And the culprit behind this disaster was a drilling company that mined underground resources. The story happened 15 years ago, when the workers at the drilling site were happily working and suddenly discovered something coming out of the drill hole. Upon closer inspection, it was a creature they had never seen before. From thousands of meters underground, curious about what had happened, an employee decided to go out and investigate, only to be attacked by a monster the moment he stepped out of the office. It was a monster that resembled a crow, instantly rushing into the office, leaving no one spared. As more and more monsters appeared, they quickly took over the entire site. But the disaster was just beginning, as swarms of monsters burst out of the site, and more creatures kept emerging from the drill hole. Not just birds of the air but also beasts of the land. They quickly gathered towards the cities, launching frenzied attacks on humans in the streets. In less than a day, monsters had spread across the world, turning once bustling cities into broken, hellish scenes. Although various countries quickly retaliated against the monsters, using tanks, planes, and even aircraft carriers, it was futile against their sheer numbers because the monsters were seemingly endless. Just when it seemed this disaster would be the end of humanity, the monsters returned underground after 24 hours, as if they had completed a certain mission, completely disappearing from the human world. Investigations later revealed that the drilling site incident coincided with a solar eclipse, leading people to speculate that this disaster was not a mere accident but a punishment from God. Scientists later discovered that salt was the monster's Achilles heel, capable of instantly annihilating them, but no one knew if the disaster would recur at the next solar eclipse. So countries around the world began post-disaster reconstruction while establishing special homeland security departments, transforming the drilling sites into military bases. Military facilities were equipped around deep cracks worldwide to prevent monsters from sweeping across the world again. And to commemorate those who died in the disaster, that horrifying 24 hours was named the Day of Reckoning. Thus, humanity lived peacefully for 15 years, seemingly having forgotten the disaster until the next solar eclipse gradually approached, and a fearful atmosphere spread again, as strange occurrences began to happen just like the first disaster, rare seismic activity at the drilling site, and a large number of stranded seafood on the coast. These ominous omens seemed to predict the coming of the next day of reckoning. Fortunately, this time humanity was prepared, with shelters built in various places, and the news urging everyone to make early preparations for refuge. At that moment, David and his son Tyler were watching TV when David's ex-wife, Laura, called to urge them to join her in the shelter because her current husband, Milton, had secured spots for them through his connections. However, right after David hung up the phone, he discovered that Tyler had vanished. It turned out Tyler had quietly gone to be with his girlfriend, Maddie, wanting to spend the last moments of his life with her. Just then, the sound of birds suddenly filled the sky, signaling a massive migration that heralded the beginning of the Day of Reckoning. As David went out to search for his son, the roads were already packed with people fleeing the city. Fortunately, Milton was able to locate Tyler using his phone's GPS, and Laura quickly sent the location to David. Soon, David found Tyler and others based on the GPS, and Laura and Milton also arrived. Amid the anxious alarm sounds, the family hurried towards the shelter non-stop. Meanwhile, at the drilling site, a monster had quietly surfaced, and a worker was the first to be attacked. Two soldiers who witnessed this immediately opened fire, but the bullets had no effect on the monster, indicating that the impending disaster was unavoidable despite heavy guard. Upon finally arriving at their destination, David and his group were told that the shelter was already full, and their reservation did nothing to help. 
Left with no choice, David decided to take his family to meet up with Uncle Ted in the desert, whose home had been fortified and was very secure. Everyone agreed to this plan, however, not long after they set out, they encountered a traffic jam, followed by violent shaking of the ground. As the solar eclipse began, David sensed trouble, and indeed, a massive number of monsters emerged from the drilling site. The terrifying disaster began anew, with monsters quickly appearing over the city. Seeing this, the group prepared to leave immediately. David knew a shortcut out of the city and decided to drive himself. But Milton objected, arguing that the cars were his. Suddenly, a monster flew down and snatched Milton away. Without hesitation, David chose to get into the car. And before more monsters could attack, he drove his family quickly to the river. Following the river, they successfully escaped the city. Before long, they arrived at Uncle Ted's doorstep. But no matter how much they knocked, there was no response from inside. Thinking the other party hadn't heard, David picked up a stone to make a louder noise. Unbeknownst to them, Ted was already in a precarious situation, with someone holding a gun to his head. Worse still, a large swarm of monsters was approaching. They tried to force open the steel door with tools, but to no avail. Seeing the monsters were only a short distance away, David stepped forward to protect his family, ready to fight to the death. Unexpectedly, just then, the steel door suddenly opened from the inside, and the family managed to enter the safe house just a second before the monsters could pounce on them. The group, relieved from their near-death experience, embraced Ted emotionally, thanking him for his timely rescue. However, David quickly noticed, aside from Ted's wife, Stella, there was also a stranger in military uniform inside the safe house. It was evident that this soldier had been the one pointing a gun at Ted's head and, for some reason, had a change of heart. Allowing them in, feeling something was off, David became wary of the soldier. During dinner, the soldier shared his story. He introduced himself as Garrett, a member of the Homeland Security Force stationed at the drilling site. They had tried to prevent the Day of Reckoning, but to no avail. Garrett had fallen into a salt pit by accident, which miraculously saved his life. While escaping, he happened by Ted's place and was kindly taken in. However, as Garrett spoke, Ted gave David a look and subtly pointed to a dagger on the dinner plate. David instantly understood there was something wrong with Garrett and discreetly hid the dagger. He thought he had been stealthy, but Garrett had seen through everything. After dinner, Garrett suddenly pointed a handgun at David, demanding he hand over the knife he had. Faced with Garrett's weapon, David had no choice but to comply, while Laura looked on, bewildered. He's been holding us hostage, Laura. Did you just clue into that? Garrett acted the way he did solely because Ted didn't open the door immediately, which almost cost him his life. David calmed Garrett down, suggesting he put the weapons away and sit down to talk things over properly. But Maddie sensed something was off, as the outside had suddenly become eerily quiet. Where had all the monsters gone? Unknown to them, a monster had already infiltrated the house through the pipes. Just as everyone was on edge, the monster suddenly attacked Stella through the window. Fortunately, Ted reacted quickly, pulling the monster off her and slamming it hard onto the table. David also took advantage of the chaos to snatch Garrett's gun and fired wildly at the monster. However, due to the monster's swift movements, he failed to hit it. In the end, it was Maddie who impressively split the monster in two with a cleaver, but Stella, who was bitten, was seriously injured and needed immediate treatment. Meanwhile, the monsters outside kept slamming against the door and the addition of a minotaur-like beast meant the safe house was no longer secure. Realizing that the safe house would eventually be breached if things continued this way, David decided to leave immediately, considering there were still eight long hours until the day of reckoning ended. Garrett, who was tied up, suggested heading to the drilling site, which had safe rooms for shelter and a medical room for treating Stella, since monsters tended to flock to populated areas. Garrett believed the drilling site would now be the safest place. With no other options and Stella's condition worsening, they had no time to deliberate and agreed to the proposal. After they were armed, Ted also gave David a can of salt, which might come in handy at a critical moment. The group acted quickly, leading through a secret passage just as the steel door was breached by the monsters. Fortunately, there were no monsters on this side, and they only needed to find Garrett's car to drive to the drilling site. Finally, the next morning, they arrived at where Garrett had parked, but a large swarm of monsters also converged on them. Worse still, Stella, who had been bitten by a monster, suddenly seized Ted's gun and accidentally shot him. The changes in Stella made it clear she had been infected by the monsters. Afraid of turning into a monster herself, Stella stepped out of the car, intending to end her life. 
though she eventually let go of the gun after Ted's persuasion, but to avoid endangering the group, Stella chose to stay behind and face the incoming monsters alone. As the monsters closed in, the others had no choice but to leave, watching helplessly as Stella was overwhelmed by the monsters. Then, led by Garrett, they quickly arrived at the drilling site. The gates were wide open, indicating that the place had already been overrun by monsters. Entering cautiously, they found it pitch dark inside, likely due to a power system failure, but thankfully saw no sign of monsters. However, since Ted was injured, they had to split up. Garrett took David to the engine room to restore the power system, while the others took Ted to the medical room to treat his wounds. On the way, Garrett told David that they had once tried to fill the drill hole with salt water, attempting to use it as a defensive measure to block the monsters. However, to their surprise, the drill hole seemed bottomless, and it was never filled before the disaster occurred again. They soon reached the engine room, and under David's operation, the power system was successfully restored. However, on their way back, they stumbled upon a fresh corpse, indicating there were still monsters inside the base. Sure enough, the next second, they heard the monstrous roar. They arrived at the infirmary to meet up with the rest of the group, and quickly headed for safety. However, Garrett, who was covering the rear, was suddenly attacked by a monster, David's weapon was knocked away. David swiftly grabbed Ted's pistol and shot at the monster, but even after emptying the magazine, he couldn't take it down. It was only with Garrett's cooperation that they barely managed to eliminate the creature. Yet, the gunfire attracted more monsters. Seeing this, Garrett decisively abandoned them and locked himself in the safety room, leaving David and the others outside. With no other choice, David had to lead his family to find their own way to survive. It turned out Garrett had left the team because he had just been infected by a monster, he wanted to find a place to be alone. Meanwhile, David and the others took refuge in an engine room, locking the steel door behind them. David then noticed salt spilling from the pipes and deduced that these were part of a desalination system responsible for transporting brine. He planned to return to the engine room to reopen the circulation tank so that the brine would flow into the pipes again. These pipes were connected to the fire suppression system, which, if triggered, could kill all the monsters in the base. After making arrangements, David headed to the engine room through the ventilation ducts, but soon after he left, a monster broke in. The others ran for their lives. David, reaching the engine room, encountered another monster mid-meal. He carefully turned the valves. Thankfully unnoticed by the creature, David successfully reopened the circulation tank, allowing the brine to flow back into the pipes. However, as he was leaving, the monster spotted him. But David was completely unaware. Just as he crawled into the ventilation duct, the monster chased after him. In a critical moment, that bottle of salt came into play, directly annihilating the monster. Upon returning, David found his family gone. Unbeknownst to him, they were under attack by monsters, with no escape ahead. In a desperate moment, David noticed a loudspeaker on the electrical box and urgently called out to them. Just then, a monster approached them, with the switch for the fire alarm system conveniently ahead, to protect his family. Ted, despite his age, bravely charged forward with an axe, wielding the fire axe. Ted fought heroically, achieving a quintuple kill, but even his valor couldn't withstand the endless waves of monsters. Still, in his dying moments, Ted managed to activate the switch, unleashing a torrent of brine that instantly killed the monsters in sight, including those lurking in the shadows. Sadly, the effect of the brine was too short-lived. Suddenly, the ground shook as the 24-hour day of reckoning finally ended, and the monsters began to retreat back to the base, diving down the drills to the Earth's depths. They wanted to seize the chance to escape, but Garrett blocked their way. Without saying a word, Garrett shot and wounded Tyler. At this point, Garrett had completely lost his mind and didn't plan to let them leave alive. In the nick of time, David used a fire extinguisher to knock Garrett down, before Garrett could react. A centipede monster fixed its gaze on him, and in the next second, Garrett was swallowed whole by the centipede monster. Seeing this, David quickly led his family to escape. They found a lab, where they quickly fashioned a salt bomb. As the monster broke through the door, David kicked the bomb towards it. An explosion later, the centipede monster turned into dust. When they emerged from the base, no traces of the monsters could be seen. 
the crisis finally over, after their harrowing escape. David and Laura's old love rekindled, while Tyler came to cherish Maddie even more, though the city, ravaged by monsters, was left in ruins, as long as people survive, it will once again spring back to life. Even if the day of reckoning never ends, humanity will never compromise with fate.